today we're gonna be making a box to store random things, I guess. I will be using walnut, peach and oak. I find it an interesting exercise to play by hand. It's long and tedious, but it can also be very meditational. Once the edges were squared, I proceeded to use my marking gauge. By using the thickness of each board, I can transfer them into the opposite board. I've learned that if you leave a little bit of a march, maybe one or two millimeters, it will facilitate to have a better finish. This shot is not very good, but I used a compass to divide the piece in different sections, but all the same, so I can know where my dovetails will fall. I like to sharpen my marker knife with a just simple 300 to 400 grain sandpaper. That's a very simple marking tool that I bought online, um, very cheap, that will allow you to keep your dovetails consistent. I tend to prefer Japanese saws as I like the motion of pulling more than pushing and I find it more instinctive for my style of working. And here I'm using a dovetail Japanese saw. It's important to chisel only halfway through, so you don't tear out the other side. In this case I could have done the whole way through since I have a board behind it, but I still think it's a good uh, habit to just do halfway through. And with a slight angle towards the inside so that the joint looks clean and will actually hit the, uh, the edge of the board. These little markings help me lock the board into the other board when I put them in a 90 degree angle. I find this part one of the hardest parts because it's hard to be very precise with the markings, but you have to be.
This is my first test fit and it's extremely tight. But I decided that because it was so tight, I figured that if I am able to join it, I would actually not need glue. This was quite surprising because actually the fit was on the first try, even though it was tight, it was still manageable. Because I left an extra millimeter when I was doing the markings, I was able to shave the difference afterwards to have a perfect fit. Just a very light pass on the edges to avoid the tear outs. I am now working on the cover of the box. This is end grain planing and it's a great way to test the sharpness of your blade. I wasn't very happy so I took the time to resharpen. I probably spent over 45 minutes to plane this by hand and I was worried that it would crack in the middle. Because the board had a big split in the middle, I decided to put some bow ties.
I like using this tool to check the depth and make sure that it's flat. I put some weight so that the box markings wouldn't move when I was scribing onto the bottom of the box. I'm not a huge fan of routers, but in this case I decided to go for it, but it's not a tool that I enjoy using. I had some burning when I was cutting with my saw, so I'm shaving them with the planer and it is once again end grain. At this time the tool is sharp so it goes quite fast. Now I'm working on the bottom of the box, so I need to actually join two boards together to make the right width. This time I decided to use an electrical planer to speed up the process.
and making sure that both edges are as square as possible so that when I glue these boards together they are flat and I have to do less planing afterwards. My favorite finish is linseed oil, but you need to make sure you put multiple coats and wait between them. It's long, but it's worth it.
is, uh, I'm not sure they come back from this. And now, on to the final review. Thanks for watching.